Welcome to Trash Imagination, a podcast about reimagining trash. I'm Carla Brown. Today's episode is about creative reuse and insects. We'll learn about creative reuse artists who are inspired by insects. We'll learn ways to repel insects through creative reuse. But first, let's explore how insects teach us about creative reuse. So insects are pros at creative reuse. They decompose materials and bring nutrients back to the earth. For example, wasps chew up wood fiber to make their paper nests. Bees are constantly reusing wax to make their honeycombs. Dung beetles roll manure into balls and creatively reuse them as food. And then there's a bunch of insects that use a creative reuse for camouflage, such as the lacewing larvae, which attaches soil fragments to themselves, or caddisfly larvae who make a tube from pebbles, or masked hunter bugs, which covers itself with wood chips and sand when it's in the nymph stage, or the blotched emerald moth, which in the larval stage will attach pieces of oak leaves to bristles on its body. And then the most surprising one, assassin bugs, which actually stack dead insects on themselves. These are the things they've already eaten, kind of like a costume to hide from their predators. So not only do insects creatively reuse all the time, but humans have also creatively reused insects throughout history. For example, uh, for centuries, if someone wanted to dye fabric red, they would crush a type of beetle called a cochineal, and beetle shells have been incorporated into jewelry, and some people eat insects. I once ate a dried mealworm at a science fair, and my parents like to tell a story about when I was a toddler, and I ate a dried up old fly from the windowsill. (laughs) So here's a great story about an architect who learned about creative reuse from insects. So Mick Pierce grew up in Africa, and he was observing termite mounds. And from those observations, he designed a shopping mall that keeps cool without standard air conditioning. And this mall is called the East Gate Mall in Harare, Zimbabwe. The way this mall works, it creatively reuses the cold night air by capturing it and then blowing it through the mall during the day, saving 90% of the energy it would take to keep the mall cool. You can hear an interview with Mick Pierce on the podcast Green Dreamer, which I will link in the show notes. So these are examples that show humans have been learning about creative reuse from insects for a long time. So now let's talk about creative reuse artists who are inspired by insects. I'll start with an artist who works with dead insects. So in 2015, I saw an art exhibit uh, and there was a piece in it called In the Midnight Garden, and it was created by Jennifer Angus. Now, she is a professor of textile design, and she makes huge exhibits of insects arranged on the wall, kind of like fabric design. In this case, she first painted the walls a pinkish red, which is the color that she made by grinding up those cochineal beetles that I just mentioned. And then all over the walls, there were very large insects arranged in symmetrical designs like you might see on a piece of fabric. Jennifer uses real insects that have been collected by indigenous people, mostly in Peru, Malaysia, and Indonesia. She uses insects that are only commonly available in those places. Now let's move from artists who work with dead insects and talk about those who work with live insects. And these artists are actually doing artistic collaborations with insects. The first is Stephen Kutcher, who makes art by painting on the feet of the insects and then placing them on a canvas. And the insect walks all over the canvas and it makes a painting. So he is actually an entomologist and his career other than painting with insects is that he specializes in handling insects for Hollywood movies. Agony the Dick takes objects such as porcelain figurines and sports equipment, and she places them in hives, and the bees build honeycomb around the object. 
effects. And in a lot of cases, the effect is sort of eerie. For example, the bees might build a big honeycomb hat on the head of a porcelain figure, and that hat starts to droop down over their face. And even though the results might seem a bit eerie, in some ways, Agnetha says that what the bees are trying to do is they're trying to fix things. So she purposefully places objects that are broken in some way in the hives, and she finds that the bees are drawn to fix the parts that are broken. So finally, I wanted to know if any artists collaborate with wasps. So like bees, wasps build large structures, uh, their nests, and they often have a honeycomb shape, but they're made from wood pulp. I did find one person who worked with wasps, Mattia Manchetti. So he was working with a captive colony of European paper wasps. He gave them colored paper to make their nests one color after another, and they ended up making a rainbow-colored nest. So it ended up making a rather artful object, which he shared photos around the world. Of course, making the sculpture was not actually his number one goal. He was focused on studying the wasps. But I think anyone who works with wasps and then makes something artful deserves recognition. (laughs) Now, here is a story that I'm going to add at the last minute. I already recorded this episode, but something really magical just happened related to wasps and creative reuse. So I'm going to add this story now. I have been working on reducing the amount of paper in my house by scanning the documents and then recycling the originals. So I was scanning some journals from when I was in high school. And as I scan them, I read them. And reading these journals inspired me to reach out to some people who I have not talked with in 30 years. And one of those people is Johanna Griffith. So Johanna and I traveled to Australia together for a Girl Guide Jamboree when I was 14 years old. Johanna went on to become an artist who does printmaking and a bunch of other wonderful art forms. So I was looking at her Instagram and her most recent post was about making paper from an old wasp nest. So Johanna often has scraps of a very high quality paper that are cut from making her prints. And she will take those off cuts and blend them up to make new paper. And in this example, she incorporated the wasp nest in her paper making. And she told me that it blended perfectly well because, of course, wasp nests are also made from wood fiber. And then she chose to add some nice big chunks of wasp nest in the paper. And that part of it looks so cool. It looks a bit like sedimentary rock. So Johanna facilitates workshops uh, where her students sew together paper of varying densities. So she said this will make really great material for that kind of work. So mostly I am amazed that we were both thinking about this rather odd topic, which is insects and creative reuse. We were thinking at it about it at around the same time when we had not been in contact for 30 years. And then just at this moment, I felt compelled to find her and she felt compelled to make paper from a wasp nest. So I have mentioned in previous episodes how I believe there is such a thing as creative reuse magic, where artists are out in the world working on something. And just when I'm about to do an episode, I find they are working on that topic. And they maybe just shared their work on that a week or a month before. And I just think it is magic how we find each other at that moment. So next I'll talk about artists who make sculptures of insects from creatively reused materials. So these artists make insects, sometimes very small and sometimes very huge. And I think audiences are attracted to sculptures of insects, even if they don't like real insects, because the artists are taking something very small that you can't examine easily, and then they are blowing it up to a size that you can really look at the detail. And for artists, I would say making sculptures of insects is likely a lot of fun because there are so many kinds of insects. So it would be a never ending source of inspiration. 
These sculptures remind me of the work that I talked about in my recent episode about robots from recycled materials. So in some ways, insect sculptures have a similar feeling as robots in that they have an exoskeleton. However, a key difference is that insects are actually alive and the artist must communicate that aliveness through the sculpture's attitude and position. The most famous sculptor who makes insects from recycled materials is Edouard Martinet. He was asked if he could would make sculptures of creatures like cats or dogs, and he says, no, he prefers to sculpt animals that people find scary. His first sculpture was a mosquito made from bicycle parts. He finds his materials at flea markets and junk dealers. They're mostly metal, but there's some plastic, like plastic lights. For example, he has a sculpture of a praying mantis, and the bright orange eyes are made from plastic signal lights. He collects parts from cars, bicycles, mopeds, broken typewriters, cutlery, and kitchen items. He became interested in insects as a child because he had a teacher who was an entomologist who told them lots of stories about insects, and they had a nature club where they would keep the insects and they would draw them. And the other thing that's interesting about his sculptures is that he never welds his sculptures together, but only connects everything with little tiny screws. So I love watching videos of creative reuse artists, such as Edouard at work. It looks like magic because he starts pulling items together and gradually the sculpture starts looking like a fly or a fish or whatever he's making. And I know because I myself have made sculptures from recycled materials that really he's running through this list of objects in his mind from his huge collection of materials and he's imagining how to add detail or how to add bulk to the sculpture. And really, I feel like this type of sculpture is almost more about just remembering what you have, (laughs) more so than any other activity. Circuit boards and other e-waste are also popular items for artists to make insect sculptures. I think there is a natural connection between e-waste and insects because many insects buzz and many electronics buzz. And also artists make insect sculptures from watch parts, which is sort of like e-waste in that it has a lot of fun, small mechanical parts. And also watches make clicking and ticking sounds and insects make those sounds too. One of my favorite insect sculpture artists is Lex Talkington. He makes his insects mostly from e-waste. He makes some three-dimensional objects, but more often what he does is he lays his insects or other creatures that he's sculpting, he lays them kind of flat in a rectangular shaped mold. And he gets them all laid out just with such detail. And then when he likes it, he pours resin over the sculpture and that holds all the items in place. The final result is a solid block of plastic that encases the art. And his pieces are so incredibly detailed. You can see every little tiny hair on a fly. And it's really fun to watch his process videos because you'll see him pour the resin into the mold. And meanwhile, this is causing some of his very careful details to move by the flowing movement of the resin. And so he's using his long tweezers to quickly move things back into the position he wants before the resin gets very solid. So I would really recommend you check out his Instagram feed where he puts lots of fun process videos. The next creative reuse insect artist that I want to talk about is Kim Ladder. So she started a project during social distancing during COVID-19. So in Australia, they call this time isolation. So Kim started a project on Facebook called Isolation Beetle Project. And she suggested themes and people ended up making beetles from recycled materials according to these themes. And some examples of themes were bright, horn, rainbow, that kind of thing. So, and Kim made a beetle for each day in April, 2020. Most of her beetles were made from cardboard toilet paper rolls and she painted them with sparkly paints and they're really beautiful. 
Now, there are many other artists who sculpt insects from recycled materials. I'll just quickly name a few more, and you can see them up on the Pinterest board that goes with this episode. Uh, So there's Mr. Finch. He sows giant moths. He sows many things, but he, he does giant moths from vintage fabrics. And I actually went into detail about his work in my episode on vintage fabrics. Raku Inui sculpts insects from flower petals, and I'll link to a great video where he talks through his process. Mark Oliver, he made a series of insects called litter bugs from a wide assortment of materials such as book covers and broken glasses and all sorts of little objects. So I don't know if you've ever looked at fishing lures, but they are meant in many cases to look like insects, and they really are a type of art themselves. So people tie the lure that best matches a fish's preferred meal, whatever fish they're trying to attract. And people use items like corks, metal spoons, pieces of skateboard, bottle caps, and many other recycled materials to make these lures or also the flies. Now, I don't know a lot about this world, but I would love to know more. So if you know about using recycled materials to make fishing lures or fishing flies, please let me know at trashimagination at gmail.com because I'd love to do an episode on fishing and creative reuse. Now, if you work with young children, you know there are millions of insect-themed crafts, and many of them use recycled materials. There are two that I've mentioned many times before on this podcast uh, that I do often. One is the milk jug butterflies craft, and the other one is my caterpillars craft, which are caterpillars made by stringing plastic caps in a row. So people make insect crafts from egg cartons, wine corks, walnut shells. Those all make really great bug bodies. And there's lots of opaque or transparent plastic packaging that can be cut to make insect wings. And then when you paint on bubble wrap and print with it, it looks like honeycomb. (laughs) And one of the best insect crafts I have ever seen was designed by the Craft Train. Their grasshopper looks really realistic with jointed legs, and it's all made from toilet paper tubes. So I've saved a bunch of these crafts on the Pinterest board that goes with this episode if you're looking for that kind of inspiration. And as always, I'm going to encourage you to evaluate the craft before you make them and make sure that you're actually reusing things and not using uh, new craft supplies as much as possible. The last topic I'm going to talk about today is repelling insects with tips related to creative reuse. So many people make insect traps from plastic bottles. They cut off uh, the top of the bottle and they turn it back inside the bottle and then they put sugar water down in the bottom and the insects go down the spout to seek the sugar, but they can't find their way out and they eventually drown. Another project that I just learned about is called a tick tube. So the way this works is you take cotton balls and you shake permethrin powder on them. And now this is an insecticide made from chrysanthemum flowers. And you put the cotton balls in a cardboard tube and you place it around your home property outside. So small animals like mice will take the cotton and bring it to their nests. And this particular powder kills the ticks that tend to live on the mice without hurting the mice. But that's great because then the mice are not transporting the ticks all over the place and where they would get on you (laughs) or your pets. Some people recommend using dryer lint instead of cotton balls, but... I've heard many times that dryer lint is actually a terrible insulator for nests because it includes many synthetic fibers that come off your clothes and when it gets wet, it's pretty useless. So in general, I don't encourage people to give wildlife dryer lint. The last insect repelling idea that I'll mention involves uh, making a pretend hornet nest and hanging it on your property. So the idea is that hornets are territorial and when they see a hornet's nest, they will avoid your property. They don't go double check that it's real. So you can purchase pretend hornet nests online, but I also found that some people were making them by crocheting creatively reused materials, like making yarn from gray t-shirts. So I will link to a pattern in the show notes if you like to crochet and you would like to deter hornets from coming to your home. 
Thank you for listening. If you have made insect-inspired art from creatively reused items, please let me know at trashimagination at gmail.com. Also, I just wanted to let you know that right now it is Plastic Free July. So this is a global challenge where you aim to reduce your plastic use in at least whatever way you can do it for this month. And you can get ideas of possible actions that you could take by listening to the podcast Sustainable Brown Girl, which I will link in the show notes. Until next time, may you see trash as a source of insect art in your life. <laughs>